Welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. My name is Danny Rocks. In our last lesson, I showed you how to create names and ranges and then apply those names in formulas. Applying names in formulas makes it easier for us to explain the formula to someone who's not as familiar with the formula as we are. We use the control tilde as a toggle to go between results and formulas. Well, today we're going to take this a step further. We're going to show you how to audit your formulas, not to prepare for an IRS audit. No, what we want to do is we want to be able to see where the dependencies and precedents are in our formulas. So in this case, with this cell for B10, for my net profit, I want to see what are the direct precedents to that formula. And I can see them, that gross profit and overhead are the direct precedence. Taking it to another level, we click it again. Now we start to see some of our indirect precedents. Clicking it again, we can see that this will trace back to information that are in cells in a completely different workbook. For example, I can see that this actually traces all the way back to another workbook called quarter one. Let's cancel that right now and let's remove the arrows for the precedents. Precedents are uh, directly feed into a formula. Dependents depend upon other cells or other formulas. So let's take a look up here and see what the dependents are. They are the direct dependents and they are the indirect dependents on that cell. Let's remove these. Okay, let's move over to another worksheet, monthly budget. Let's pick a formula. In this case, we were using a name in the formula. We were averaging the utilities. If I wanted to see the precedent, there it is. Now, this is very helpful. I encourage clients before they start to uh, delete cells, delete ranges, delete columns or rows, that they do a formula audit to see which cells are the key cells, which cells will feed into formulas. Let's remove these. Now let's move over to our next tab with our name constant. You may recall that in this case we used a name constant for sales tax. So we were taking the pre-tax total and timesing it by the sales tax. What I want to do here is show you another feature on our formula auditing toolbar called evaluate the formula. We're going to go step by step through this formula. Let's move this just up a bit. And what we're seeing here is that in this cell for E2, that it is D2 times the sales tax. Now, if I want to see from the underline if there is something else that D2 is dependent upon, I would step into that part of the formula. And so now I can see that D2 is a result of taking A2 times C2. All right, let's step out of that. And now we're on to the next part of the formula, the sales tax. If I want to step into it, it shows me that the name constant is referring to a value of 8.5% for our sales tax. Step out of it, evaluate, and there's our result. So evaluating the formulas, and that's this bar here, this icon on the formula auditing toolbar, is great when we have more complex formulas or if we're getting a result that we weren't quite expecting. Okay, the last feature that I want to show you about names is that when we have a lot of names, it can get really rather complex and we're not sure what the name refers to uh, and we'd like to have a list of the names. So in this case, I've been able to produce a list of the names uh, for all the cells, all the constants, all the ranges in here. So for example, the sales tax, the name constant, that's what it refers to. If I want to see gross profit, gross profit is in the net profit worksheet cell B8. Let me show you how we produce a list of the names. Let's just go right down here underneath it. And what I do is go to insert name and then I choose paste. And what I want to do is paste a list of all the names in my workbook. And there it is. That's how we do it. Let's do control Z to get rid of that. Okay, finally, you recall that back in the net profit work sheet that our net profit when we trace back all of the precedents went all the way back to this first quarter worksheet. What I want to do here is show you that when we are working in this worksheet, how any change that we make back here will have an effect on the result. So we're going to do what's called watch the formula. Let's select the formula whose results we want to watch, in this case net profit. And we'll come over here and say show the watch window. 
we have to add a watch. Since we're in this cell, that's the cell we want to watch. So now when we're over here in the first quarter, we want to be able to see any changes that we make here, what effect they're going to have on our net profit. So let's say that in January, we had higher unit sales than we thought. If I change that to 5,000, watch what happens when I hit enter. You see how that affects our net profit? Or what if our direct costs were higher in February than we were expecting? Let's say that they were 15,500. When I hit enter, watch what happens. You see how this will have a direct effect on our net profit. Okay, there you've learned how to use the formula auditing toolbar. We'll see you in the next Tips and Time Savers.